welcome to this second uh, uh, Fujita Bantane Alumni Association webinar. Uh, today we have uh, the pleasure to uh, listen to two very interesting presentations given by uh, very uh, great neurosurgeons and friends, Professor Naoki Nakayama from one side and later uh, Dr. Thomas Tommy, who is one of the founders of our association. Um, I would like first to uh, ask Professor Yoko Kato to give some introductory uh, words mm -hmm. to this meeting, please. And then I will introduce the first speaker. So the Japanese time is 7 p.m. So konbanwa. <laughs> so everybody looks uh, very nice and uh, happy new year. And uh, I think maybe that you have a prosperous, maybe the, your plan in, uh, in, in 2021. I think uh, I uh, wish you uh, a step forward the, according to your plan uh, in this year. Okay, thank you very much. And also, uh, uh, Professor Nakayama uh, is uh, a really nice vascular neurosurgeon. Uh, he, maybe uh, I think almost every day, night, uh, he has so many emergency cases and also the uh, electrical cases. Maybe that he can do uh, every variety of the vascular region, I think. We are very lucky to hear his uh, lecture and followed by Dr. Thomas, very scientific papers, I think. Thank you very much. So uh, we can uh, start with the first speaker, who is Professor Naoki Nakayama. He graduated at Hokkaido University. Just a few words to introduce our uh, speaker. Uh, he did a fellowship uh, at the Department of Neuroscience, University of California in Davis, and at the Brain Research Institute at Niigata University. Uh, he got his uh, neurosurgical training, uh, as you can see, at Hokkaido University Hospital, Asahikawa Red Cross Hospital, and Sapporo Azabu Neurosurgical Hospital. Uh, he has been assistant professor first at Hokkaido University, then lecturer, and finally, he is uh, associate professor at the Department of Neurosurgery uh, at Hokkaido University. And as Professor Yoko Kato already said, his major research interests are about uh, cerebrovascular surgery, uh, in particular aneurysms, bypass, AVM, CEA. So uh, today uh, we have the pleasure uh, to uh, hear uh, Professor Nakayama talk about uh, integration of technique and technology in cerebrovascular surgery. I think it's a very exciting title. So uh, I kindly ask uh, our guest to start uh, his presentation. Thank you uh, for uh, Professor Ferretti for uh, inviting me and a uh, uh, kind invitation. So I'm very happy to join uh, your alumni webinar. So, and I would like to express my uh, Deep appreciation to Professor Yoko Kato uh, for uh, so continuous uh, kindness and support and encourage me. And very thank you. For so I will share the, uh, my presentation file. So uh, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, various techniques and uh, uh, useful recent technology in cerebral vascular surgery. First of all, I would like to focus on the Paracoloid ICA aneurysms. In recent years, uh, paracoloid aneurysms are increasingly being treated with IVR such as flow diverter. I think it's a good thing that a more easy method than surgery is becoming popular. I believe that uh, a percentage treated with IVR will increase dramatically in the future. I think this is actually true now in paracroid aneurysm. However, uh, uh, IVR is not perfect treatment. There are some uh, conditions where IVR is not indicated, such as rupture or partial thrombosis. And there is a certain possibility of recurrence, and uh, there is some risk of post-IVR hemorrhage. I think it is important to properly maintain the surgical techniques and hand down to the next generation doctors. I uh, experienced 123 surgeries of paracrine aneurysm until uh, 2019, and uh, 
in last three years, approximately 10 cases. Uh, among them, uh, about 6% of uh, cases were usual arguments, and the rest of 40% uh, were non clippable Regarding the surgical methods, uh, clipping alone is about 60%, and uh, uh, bypass combined, most of them are high flow bypass is about 40%. So the, let's take a look at bypass combined surgery. Uh, this case is uh, right C23, uh, partially thrombosed large angiosis. Angiosis mastodome is intradural, but the distal neck is uh, at the distal dural ring, and the proximal neck is completely in the cavernous sinus. So um, large and thrombosed, so the trapping with bypass reconstruction is needed. First, uh, for safety, secure the cervical ICA. And uh, uh, I'm sorry. And the uh, intradural distal ICA C1. Next, the high flow bypass has to be completed. After that, the anterior cranioidectomy and the dural ring is open to export C3. Then the anginismal trapping uh, can be performed. I think uh, it is safe, more safe to do in this order. I mean, uh, graft is first and next, uh, cranioidectomy and the trapping. Uh, this order is, uh, I think, maybe more uh, safe because we can handle anything that may happen during the entire process. So the, for uh, ruptured C2 anterior wall bristol like aneurysm, our concept is to make high flow bypass first and then anismal trapping. This surgery takes a long time, but uh, I think it is safer and more reliable. I know that another method is uh, uh, wrapping and creeping. So it's a nice good uh, method, but uh, we prefer the high flow bypass. Now then, uh, let's think about creeping. So this case is uh, right ICA C2 aneurysm projecting supermedial direction. Due to the compression of the optic chiasm by the aneurysm, the patient presented with hemianopsia and decreased visual acuity in the right eye. I always perform anterior craniotectomy in the epidural space after making unroofing on the optic canal during the anterior craniotectomy process and take off it. Then the C3 portion become visible in the state of covered with dura mater. Next, back to the intradura, the dura ring is open and the proximal ring, uh, proximal ICA is secured at the C3 portion. Once sufficiently exposed, creeping is really safe. So one advantage of creeping is that the uh, optic nerve can be immediately decompressed by puncturing the aneurysm. After surgery, hemianopsia and the uh, visual acuity of the right eye was improved. So uh, for more than 10 years, we have been, we, I mean, uh, with Dr. Ishikawa, and me uh, promoting the concept of dye information in creeping. We named this concept the closure line. Almost all of aneurysms are riding at the bifurcation of the parent artery. So the aneurysmal wall, aneurysmal wall extends to parent artery. In order to eliminate the aneurysmal wall to the base, while keeping the diameter of the bifurcation vessel, it is recommended to make a line around the groin of the bifurcation in the direction also go down to the bifurcating vessel by creeping. Then the, what kind of closure line is ideal for the paracrinoid ICA aneurysms? 
This case is a left IC ophthalmic angles projecting to superior medial direction. Anterior craniotomy has already been done from the epidural and opening the distal ring and C3 was exposed. And using a temporary clamp at C3, the aneurysm is uh, peeled free from the optic nerve while pushing the aneurysm without uh, pressing the optic nerve as much as possible. And then the curved clip is applied in orthogonal to uh, ICA with the curve aligned with the circumference of the ICA. It makes complete disappearance of the anismal wall and the diameter of the parent artery is maintained. Next case is right superior anterior type. Same as before, the unroofing of the optic canal and the anterior craniotomy were made in epidural. And opening the drawing, uh, C3 is exposed. You can observe that the base of the aneurysmal wall is overlying the parent artery. It is better to make a closure line in the orthogonal direction along with the circumference of the ICA. Multiple clips are often used to make that line. So uh, three clips forms circumference closure line. In the case of parallel closure line, the base of the agnismal wall must be remained to keep the diameter of the parent artery. The circumference closure line can eliminate the agnismal wall completely, keeping the uh, diameter of the parent artery. So uh, how about in the posterior medial direction? like this case. In the case of this direction, the anginus is uh, located on the other side of the ICA. So in general, it will be uh, crossed with a fenestrated clip across the ICA. In this situation, the closure line is parallel to the ICA. But uh, a parallel closure line with fenestrated clip is not always a good choice. So uh, this case is also posterior medial, medial type of right ICA. As usual, uh, unloofing of the optic panel and the anterior craniodectomy is performed in epidural space, removing the cranial process, drilling the uh, opt uh, optic strap, and return to the intradural and uh, open the distal dural ring. So it's better to uh, dissect the dural ring from medial side. Expose the C3 while packing the bleeding from the cavernous sinus. And uh, here is ochromotor nerve, I mean the proximal ring, and this is ophthalmic artery. And we can see the small wall uh, behind the ICA here, and here is an aneurysmal wall and the ophthalmic artery. When I applied the fenestrate clip, but the ICA gets twisted and kinking because the ICA runs in the curve. So I inserted the curved, right, uh, curved clip orthogonal way to the ICA along with circumference of the ICA. Since it doesn't reach all the way around the medial side, from this side, I used another smaller clip to meet to the first clip. These two clips made a semicircle line. So this means the circumference closure line on the back side of the ICA. The two clips are shaped to scoop up the ICA. This is a view from the back. Uh, I mean, the, that is caudal view. Fenestrated clip means parallel closure line. In that case, the anginismal wall will have to remain 
to keep the parent happy. On the other hand, I think it's uh, ideal to insert curved clip to make a circumference closure line. Nevertheless, in the case where the neck is wide and the animation is large, it will be formed with multiple fenestrated clips. Often the aneurysm closure is not string, strong enough and may need to be reinforced with vertical clip. Anyway, the uh, parallel closure line was made. This is a little larger posterior medial type. Because the aneurysm is large in size, securing the uh, aneurysm uh, securing the proximal ICA in the cervical uh, portion beforehand, and uh, making an anterior quinoidectomy, and opening the dural ring to expose the C3, and also dissect the distal branch to secure the aneurysmal neck. Since the anus was broad and large, I tried parallel closure line formation with multiple fenestrated clip. However, uh, when closure of the aneurysm is obtained, the ICA will uh, become stenotic. So uh, I gave up the fenestrated clip formation, removing all clips while temporarily clamping of ICA, and uh, inserted a large curved clip in perpendicular, perpendicular way to the ICA. And the smaller clips will apply to the hem of each side uh, and the completed uh, circumference closure line. It takes some uh, courage, but uh, it's possible to, if the area around the angles has been properly dissected and exposed. So the parallel closure line is uh, easy to apply the clip, but uh, uh, it has a uh, disadvantage, which is kinking or stenosis of ICA is likely to occur. But the circumference closure line uh, has advantage that uh, good settlement to neck and the tightening of the angles. And ICA stenosis is unlikely to occur. However, its clip insertion is a little more difficult. Uh, however, I think it is important to understand the characteristics of each closure line and choose the one that uh, best suits your need, not just the ease for gripping. And by the way, uh, for paracoid and surgery, uh, several techniques are necessary. Anterocrinoidectomy and the dural ring opening or bypass and uh, suction decompression and so on. As the number of cases of open surgery is decreasing, I think it is an important issue how to hand down these techniques uh, efficiently to the next generation. Especially anterocrinoidectomy requires learning and training. I recommend epidural procedure because of its completeness and clarity. It corresponds to the first step of the Torrent's approach. First, peel back the shallow layer of the dura mater, of the temporal fossa from superior uh, orbital fissure to the rotunda. Next, drain the superior wall of optic canal and the next, uh, perform the drilling of the superior wall uh, during the uh, base of anterior process, like hollowing out the inside and take off the cleaning process. Then the uh, optic nerve and optic strut, the C3 position of the ICA and the ochromotor nerve that runs across the ICA can be observed from the epidural. However, it is difficult for a young surgeon to know where to start and how much to drain. And that's where the utilization of recent technologies comes in. The first one is AR, augmented reality, using the navigation system linked to the microscope. 
For example, uh, in this case of light ICF tamikate aneurysm, the DICOM data of MRI and the 3D CTA were merged and made segmentation. And it is constructed into the 3D object. Let's take off the veins. And uh, we can see the aneurysm and uh, optic nerve and the uh, anterior cranial process. So here is optic canal. By registering this 3D data to the navigation system, the 3D image is superimposed and projected as a transparent image in the microscopic field of view. Now I'm moving the focus up and down. Objects in a certain depth from the plane of focus will be displayed. Changing the views of uh, explanation, uh, this is a plane of focus. Moving focus, the, this solid area, solid colored area was displayed as a transparent image. The focus point of the microscope plays a role in the navigation probe. Uh, this is a real image that the surgeon sees in his eyepiece of the microscope. So the optic nerve, optic chiasm, and the internal carcitatory aneurysm. Certainly the real structure and the 3D image data match perfectly. And I return to the epidural to, uh, for a crinoidectomy, peeling of the dura. And also an uh, experienced surgeon can identify the location of the optic canal by the curved shape of the bone edge and the position feeling. The younger generation surgeons has difficulty in making decisions. However, if AR shows its position, anyone can proceed with uh, confidence. And there is an ICA behind the culinary process, but uh, it is safe to work with the AR showing us its uh, location. Then uh, return to the intradural again. Open the distal drawing, exposure of the C3 portion of ICA, securing the proximal artery here, and identifying ophthalmic artery, dissecting angle from optic now. This is optic artery or ophthalmic artery. Uh, here is ophthalmic artery, so the rest is creeping. And uh, I also use uh, VR, virtual reality. It is uh, like you reduce yourself to microscopic, like uh, the, like, uh, the uh, Ant-Man and uh, Fantastic Voyage of the movie, and uh, enter into patient's 3D head created with Tycom data. This is a very emotional feeling when you actually experience it. I think it will help us understand how it looks like to enter inside in the same angle as the surgery. You can also try to do a crinoidectomy by drilling the bone. I think it is very useful as preoperative simulation. These technologies are useful also for AVM. This is a non-ruptured left deep medial occipital AVM. Occipital interhemispheric approach you know, was selected to preserve the optic radiation. Before surgery, we would like to have a detailed understanding of the structure of the blood vessels. Number one is a main feeder uh, beginning from PCA. And uh, number two is also a second feeder beginning from PCA. And number three is a passing artery it goes to normal area, branching small feeders to the nidus. However, this kind of images has its limitation, even its stereoscopic vision, 
because the running of those uh, vessels is very complicated. Then uh, we output the image data to the 3D printer. This is a, a plaster type. It is very fragile and requires special treatment such as coating with glue and so on. But uh, it can be constructed in very fine detail. Recently, I've been using Beijing ones uh, as well. By making a 3D model in this way, and uh, observing it in my hand, I can get an accurate understanding of the structure of each vessel and the VR observation. So what does it look like when you enter inside the head in the same position as the surgery? I can understand the spatial location and the distance with a very high reality. It is like becoming a microscopic being myself and walking around in the forest of blood vessels. So let's see the actual surgical video. First, as an initial condition, an ICG video angiography will be observed. Here is the main trainer. And the ICG video angiography uh, is observed. And uh, this is uh, it's a flow analysis, analysis from ICG video angiography data. A color map of the delay time, which is the time for a flow analysis contrast to reach its peak. And by taking a, a each ROI, a diagram of the flow sensor's intensity can be generated. And this slope, the angle of the rise of this flow sensor's curve is uh, proportional to the blood flow in the region. So this is semi quantitative evaluation of blood flow in each vessel. So uh, this is number one feeder, main feeder. And uh, this is the uh, second number two feeder. Then uh, number one feeder, main feeder, it was cramped. And the uh, ICG video angiography again. So the, the flow of NIDAS seems to be slowed down a lot. Comparing with the uh, before and after the uh, uh, cramping main feeder, the change of NIDAS flow is very obvious. So now uh, cramping also number two feeder and the dissection of the NIDAS will be started. Following the uh, structure uh, of a bound boundary of the NIDAS, I dissect the NIDAS as if uh, scraping the white matter of the NIDAS wall. Since the structure of the region is accurately understand, understood in the uh, preoperative simulation with 3D printer model and uh, virtual reality, the boundaries of the region can be accurately traced. The position of the fine feeder branches from number three, passing artery, was exactly as I expected. And the normal route of number three could be preserved. And in this way, uh, accurate uh, uh, region dissection is achieved. So, and uh, finally, uh, the main feeders were coagulated and uh, cut, and the main drainer was cramped and cut. So, the region was removed completely. So the preoperative simulation using the uh, 3D image and the 3D printer and VR is very useful for uh, AVM surgery. And uh, cerebral vascular surgery requires a, a very variety of the techniques, uh, including bypass and uh, uh, fissure dissection, creeping and uh, skull based drilling and so on. The evolutionary research technologies uh, 
of recent years will help us that, uh, to accurately perform these uh, techniques. So the, that's, for, that's all for now. I hope that there is at least one thing that will be helpful to you. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you, Professor Nakayama. I think there are for sure more than one thing that can be useful for us. You showed so many very interesting and I would say modern techniques and technologies. Uh, I was uh, like uh, fascinated, especially by augmented reality. I really think uh, this kind of tool nowadays uh, uh, can be very important, especially for young neurosurgeons, uh, uh, as nowadays uh, uh, young neurosurgeons uh, are, have less chances uh, to get exposed early. Uh, to uh, uh, vascular neurosurgery because of the advancements of endovascular techniques. So I think uh, uh, it's a really, really uh, beautiful tool. So I would like to ask uh, the audience uh, for questions. I'm sure uh, there, there will be questions uh, for Professor Nakayama about this very interesting presentation. Uh, hi, Professor Alberto. Nice seeing you again. Hi, hi. Thank you. I'm Walid from Egypt. Hi, Professor Kato, and very nice talk and presentation, Professor Nakayama. Uh, nice dissections, uh, the aneurysm surgeries, and the AVM surgeries was very beautiful. Uh, I would like to ask about in cases of paraclinoidal aneurysms if the aneurysm was uh, ruptured, would you do uh, an extradural clinidectomy or rather an intradural clinidectomy? So it depends on the direction of the uh, projecting direction of the aneurysmal dome. So when the aneurysmal dome uh, project to the medial side or inferior side, so we can approach access to the C3 position of the ICA uh, without touching the aneurysm. So, the, so uh, it's important to uh, 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 surgical portion is so anytime we can prove that, but, but not uh, need for incision in the case of medial side of angles. We can approach the C3 position and uh, secure the proximal artery. But uh, in the case of uh, lateral pro projecting paraclinal angles, we have to uh, secure at first in the surgical position of the ICA. But the uh, rupture case is uh, so usually projecting to the medial side, I think. So okay, that's, that, that, that's important to uh, keep the surgical portion in rupture case. Okay, so another question. In cases of, do you, you use the suction decompression technique, you are using it through the superior thyroid artery, right? Uh, yes, superior thyroid is a very uh, usual way to suction decompression. But uh, it, uh, its problem is uh, during suction, so it uh, usually the, it needs the distal creep, so effective suction. So it uh, maybe cause the uh, steel of uh, anterior choroidal artery. It's very risky, I think. So I don't like that. So uh, the uh, other way I recommend is uh, directly puncture the aneurysmal dome with mm -hmm. uh, bypass support and the trapping, temporary trapping. So we can directly puncture the aneurysm. But uh, maybe so um, uh, proper uh, temporary creeping so make, up, make us the, uh, easy to creeping the aneurysm, uh, uh, even if it is larger size. So suction decompression is not so many times I use. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Professor, do you, do you uh, always uh, expose the carotid artery at the neck? Not, not, not uh, always. Paraclinoid. Mm -hmm. How do you choose those cases when that, it is- uh, uh, Yeah, that's a uh, previous uh, question. 
at, uh, uh, from Dr. Abbas. So it depends on the algorithm projecting, uh, fit, fit project, uh, fit side project the algorithm. So major side, uh, you, you, you is now me. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, yes. yes. So uh, you use, uh, for your decision, you use projection not only to decide uh, extradural or intradural crinoidectomy, but also uh, to decide if to expose or not the carotid artery at the neck. So, so, so. Uh, it depends only to, uh, depends on only to uh, projection, projection. Mm -hmm. I mean, projection. Not depends on the intradural or the extradural. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Are Professor Naka Nakayama, can I? Wait. Can I ask him? Yeah. Uh, uh, you always uh, prepare of the complete exposure of the C3 rather than mm -hmm. the exposure of the uh, IC at the neck. Yes, so that's true. Mm -hmm. But uh, onion, uh, when the, in the case of the onion, it's uh, well, C2 portion. So, I mean, the, not exceed to C3 portion. Uh, uh, onion, it, it's not so uh, need to. Uh, keep the C3. We can uh, make a um, proximal clamp on the mm -hmm. just the ring position. Mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in that case, we need to expose the C3. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, please. No, no, no. Ish, 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 please, please. If, if, yes, uh, after you. Okay. Um, I, uh, professor, it was very nice talk, and I really like the concept of clipping in uh, parallel clipping uh, uh, closure line. And my question is like, if you are facing a large aneurysm and applying multiple clips, so after clipping, uh, you all, uh, do you always puncture the uh, aneurysm dome or uh, you leave uh, it? Uh, you mean after clipping? Yes. So um, many times I puncture. So uh, it's uh, some, uh, Confirmation of the complete closure of the uh, angles. So uh, usually we we can uh, 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 confirm the ICG video angiography, okay. but uh, sometimes ICG uh, shows false negative. So uh, when uh, I puncture, so uh, sometimes uh, bleeding will occur. Okay. So. Uh, Everybody says that's okay that uh, when the <laughs> ICG <laughs> shows uh, no feeling. It's very, uh, but, uh, but my, my, uh, so. You like puncturing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question was, and uh, now come the, uh, after puncturing, do you readjust clipping uh, to reduce the number of clips in a large aneurysm? Because uh, what, uh, what, what you, say again? Uh, like in large aneurysm, after mm -hmm. clipping, you puncture the aneurysm and then try to remodel the neck of the aneurysm to reduce the number of clips which were used. Ah uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, I I I don't need to reduce the number of clips, but uh, uh, on the other hand, I up, uh, add the more small clip to make a. So ideal line. Because, so. Uh, but I feel uh, like in my clinical practice, I try to reduce the number of clips uh, because recently I faced some large aneurysms and after clipping the aneurysm and taking guard of aneurysm, I puncture the aneurysm and try to reduce the clips and remodel the neck. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we can reduce the number of clips. It's because of budget. No, like, <laughs> issue of budget then it's okay but uh, like at my place i have budget issues so i try to use two maximum two or three clips at all not more than that thank you thank you professor yeah thank you this is how to join uh, neurosurgery and, and economy i think it's, <laughs> it's important yeah. So I have one more question uh, for Professor Nakayama. What do you think about uh, the technique uh, of coagulating uh, ah. the of the aneurysm before clipping, just to you know uh, remodel uh, 
uh, the aneurysm and make it oh, here to I share that uh, so coagulate and remove the aneurysm, but uh, I don't have that experience. I want to do that, but uh, so my fear, <laughs> uh, I can't do that. So may maybe it's a good idea. And I, 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 I have experience in see the, somebody's video, but myself, I don't have any experience. I will try <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are there other uh, questions? One for me, if I can. Yeah. Yeah. First of yes. all, I want to say thank you to Professor Nakayama to the wonderful lecture, because it's very, very interesting. And uh, one question, just uh, as a young uh, consultant that uh, like aneurysm surgery, but uh, hasn't got yet to get so much opportunities to perform it. How to improve the experience of the young neurosurgeon? What do you think is the best? Uh, cadaver, dissection, uh, a mix of uh, advanced and virtual reality? What to do to learn better? The surgery. Yeah. Not, yes, so, so cadaver dissection is a very useful way, but uh, uh, also cadaver dissection is uh, so few um, uh, experience everybody has. Mm. I recommend to my uh, colleagues, to young young surgeon, so uh, and see the video. Okay. Of the. Uh, 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 expert and himself, himself video on the uh, normal to speed. compare or so compare and uh, so a lot of video of the uh, expert so some uh, uh, maybe Sajay has uh, uh, included uh, so a lot of nuance and uh, so fine movement and uh, so uh, troubleshooting. Uh, so it's a uh, uh, need to see the uh, lot of experience. So uh, it's important. And I will, I, 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 uh, uh, I try to explain in my words to how to do the surgery. It, it's my response, but responsibility to explain in words and sentence. And uh, okay. a young surgeon needs to see that a lot of video. Okay, thank you. Uh, Albert, Albert, can I ask uh, Nakayama once again? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So as for the treatment of the ABM, so do you take uh, preoperative embolization? And uh, another question is uh, how you can use of the floor 800 mm -hmm. for ABM oh. surgery? Mm, and first question is, uh, it's a policy of each uh, hospital. I think so. Uh, I mean, uh, which doctor is responsible to that uh, uh, disease? A surgeon or uh, IVR doctor? So, I, uh, um, in my uh, opinion, I use the preoperative embolization uh, is uh, more this uh, limited, in my opinion. So it. It becomes easy to dissection, but the uh, uh, IVR embolization has its uh, risk to uh, rupture and uh, infarction. So then I uh, keep the uh, uh, control the flow of the nidus, keeping the feeding, each feeding, feed artery. So I uh, uh, surgery, or, uh, Almost surgery is uh, can remove the ABM, I think. So mm, I don't uh, like to use the IVR so many. I don't. I don't like that. And the second question is a very uh, my interesting point. So, mm -hmm. so the uh, we uh, we decide the preoperative uh, planning uh, which feeder. I have to uh, need to cramp, but uh, in the surgery. So after the cramping, the uh, main feeders, but the uh, occult feeder is appeared 
occult feeder may mean that uh, it's not visible in previous previous operative uh, examination, but uh, after the clamping of the main feeder, another uh, occult feeder is appeared. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, uh, one purpose. And uh, another second purpose is uh, uh, during dissecting the nidus, so we can see the uh, surrounding brain cortex, the uh, circulation blood flow is uh, elevated to normal uh, situation. We can see and uh, confirm that. That, that to, uh, purpose is useful mm -hmm. in the uh, ICG video mm -hmm. for 800. Okay, so can you expect uh, such as uh, hyperperfusion, uh, which you talked? Yeah, that 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 uh, that's uh, including mm. uh, purpose. Oh, okay. Mm. So maybe you can start uh, the decrease of the blood pressure. So in that case. Mm. But uh, so I don't have so uh, actual uh, hyperperfusion in that uh, intraoperative ICG video angiography. Mm. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, many times I will see the. Uh, before the NIDAS resection, the surrounding brain cortex is low pressure, low uh, perfusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the NIDAS resection, the brain uh, circulation becomes normal, oh, normalized. Okay. okay, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Okay, if uh, there are no other questions, uh, I want to thank again Professor Naoki Nakayama for sharing his experience uh, with us. And I, I want to ask uh, uh, Ishu uh, to introduce our next uh, speaker. Maybe I can, share, uh, I can share one slide with all of you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's visible. Thank you. Thank you, dear Alberto. So I, I would like to invite our next speaker, my dear friend, Dr. Thomas Tommy. Uh, he is my dear friend and he was also a fellow from Pujita Bantani Hospital. Uh, Thomas did his uh, neurosurgery from Siloam Hospital, Bogor, West Java and uh, he completed neurosurgery in 2017 and uh, he was uh, associated with fujita from 2000 in 2000 i think it's he did uh, fellowship in 2014 not 2004 yeah i think between four, 14 and 15 probably yes because it's mentioned 2004 and I don't uh, I think he visited first, right? Yeah. Thomas? You visited Fujita first in 2004, and then uh, later you, you did yeah. the fellowship. Yes. And uh, he has published uh, at, uh, six articles, and he is uh, regularly associated with our alumni, and he is a regular uh, speaker and uh, uh, attend attending faculty uh, in winter seminar. So he will be speaking about his uh, thesis topic, uh, impact of uh, interleukin A and uh, serum homocysteine and tumor necrosis factor alpha on head injury model. So I would like Dr. Thomas Tommy to present his presentation. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Professor Kato Alberto issue Professor Nakayama and friends. So I would like to present my uh, title. So this is my uh, experiments for my dissertation in uh, my uh, my PhD program in uh, Universitas Sanudin. So I would like to share this experiments and uh, the result to uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, 
I'm starting to share my screen. Okay. Okay, so the title is Effect of uh, Folinic Acid on HMGB1 Expression, Serum Homocysteine, TNF alpha, and Interleukin 10 in Head Trauma Model. So, HMGB1 is uh, high mobility group box one, which is uh, a gene. And uh, I should discuss the background first. So, severe head injury is a leading cause of mortality and morbidity that causing the economic burden in developing countries and also developed countries. Head injury significantly causes local and systemic inflammation and corticosteroid is not recommended to be used routinely by uh, the crash trial, so crash trial one and crash trial two. And also with this, uh, like uh, using the use of uh, corticosteroids in uh, spinal cord injury also is not useful. And uh, pro neuroprotection agents and maneuvers are being developed and usually high costs uh, that uh, depends on excitotoxicity and uh, reactive oxygen species. So by incidence of traumatic brain injury, so the, is the demographics about 800 to 1,300 uh, 1, 1300 uh, incidents per 100,000 people in the world. And Southeast Asia region is about uh, is 18.3 million per, uh, per year. And we can see from this road traffic collisions by India and Southeast Asia regions, uh, the incidents are quite high. The aim and objectives is to find whether the increase of HMGP1 expression on head injury model and folinic acid, or the other name is leucophorin, as HMGP expression reduction property. Different expression of HMGP1 on 12 hour and 24 hour after injury. And folinic acid could influence homocysteine, TNF alpha, and interleukin 10 concentration. And as the study is as theoretical basis of therapy in management of that injury. So uh, to, for a brief review of the literature, so pathophysiology, we all know that the mechanism is focal or diffuse, primary or secondary. And also neuroinflammation is the primary uh, cause of damage. So the insult causing tissue inflammation and release of pro-inflammatory mediators like cytokines, chemokines, prostaglandin, uh, ROS complement, uh, adhesive molecules, and nitric oxide, causing leukocyte recruitment and infiltration, upregulation of immunity responses. And to resolve this immunity response, there are anti-inflammatory agents that causing uh, the infl uh, infl inflammation to decrease such as interleukin 10 as cytokine synthesis inhibitory factor that uh, secreted by T regulator. Uh, we all know that M1 and M2 type of microglia causing uh, differentiation of phenotype in inflammation. So this picture I have taken from uh, Journal of uh, Nature Refuse Neurology by uh, Simons and uh, et al. And we can see that, uh, sorry, uh, from undifferentiated microglia by the, some factors like uh, NF-kappa beta and others, causing the phenotypic plasticity M1 and M2-like microglia, causing there is uh, causing anti-inflammatory or pro-inflammatory responses. And also this from the left side picture, we can see that during uh, zero to 14 days, the, the, the graph of uh, uh, inflammatory responses are there. We can see from uh, the first one hour or uh, the first day, we can see that neutrophil recruitment and infiltration uh, getting higher 
and production of cytokines is uh, we can can be found uh, high on uh, day zero and day three, which the trigger is somewhat uh, like HMGB1. So what is HMGB1? HMGB1 high mobility group, group box one is a gene. And a gene we can uh, is uh, translated into a protein. And this protein uh, uh, can be found in different places, uh, primarily in, nu in nucleus. So that is caused the nuclear protein and bound, uh, bond with DNA, but this is not considered as his. So when the genetic reaction. And also HMGB1 as a protein considered as damp. Damp is damage associated molecular pattern that uh, has two domains, A and box 2B. And these three cystein residues in number 23, 45, and uh, 106. If uh, there is isoform conf uh, with, um, with this, uh, residues. So if this residues found in all TR uh, form, it, this protein will have uh, part, uh, participation in autophagy and chemotactic reaction. If found in disulfide bond in, uh, on, uh, on reaction uh, on uh, chain number 23 and 45, can cause pro-inflammation cytokine induction. And if all oxidized, it causes the cell to do uh, to to apoptosis. Um, so why folinic acid? So I found the literature that uh, folic acid uh, supplementation in, uh, in can cause some uh, neuroprotection. So I uh, I look around whether folic acid can be found for IV. Uh, I have difficulties and I changed to its isoform, which is folinic acid, uh, named formyl tetrahydrofolate as a synthetic form of folic acid and used frequently as combination with uh, 5 fluorouracil in chemotherapy like Volfox and or uh, lecoforin rescue in metotrexate toxicity. And folic, folinic acid also can be called uh, vitamin B9. And uh, the dose is 60 milligram per uh, meter area, meter square uh, of body surface. And uh, its uh, mechanism is uh, in folic acid cycle and can cause reduction of homocysteine. We, can, uh, we, uh, there, uh, we know that homocysteine is one marker for vascular inflammation and uh, also readily converted into 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate and 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. This is the uh, cycle, uh, full, uh, the, the cycle of uh, tetrahydrofolate and folic acid. And uh, methylene, methylene tetrahydrofolate can be uh, synthesized into dihydrofolate by timidylate synthetase, synthetase which is uh, has function in production of uh, 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 UMP and TMP in the uh, DNA cycle. And tetrahydrofolate like uh, uh, also can cause uh, uh, dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate is uh, inhibited by methotrexate and other drugs like phenomethamine and uh, sulfadioxine and uh, causing uh, folate. Uh, 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 reduction of folate. And also homocysteine here as a risk factor is uh, changed into methionine which is a methyl donor for all metabolism and uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate with met it help at, at, as catalyst methylcobalamin can uh, to uh, change into tetrahydrofolate. 
And homocysteine as uh, amino acid is byproduct of homethionine and metabolized by transsulfuration into glutathione as a uh, antidote for reactive oxide and remethylation for as uh, remethylation as a methyl donor to be methionine. And uh, homocysteine is a task established risk factor and marker for inflammation. Independent risk factor in head injury, uh, high homocysteine will found worse outcome. So uh, we use head injury model by weight drop, uh, which, is, uh, which was developed by Marmaru and, uh, and colleagues. Uh, I know that there is a new and um, more uh, advanced uh, model for head injury like percussion injury, but why I choose this uh, model? Because one, I uh, I I um, I did the the study in uh, Indonesia, which is not that developed as uh, developed countries, and also uh, we can develop into our own uh, model, which is uh, modification of the Marmaru model in developing countries, which is which was uh, uh, published in Annal uh, Journal of Medical Surgery. Uh, study design is experimental in vivo randomized pre and post test using spread dolly rats, uh, five and eight weeks, 20, 250 to 300 grams male, and being done in uh, Universitas Hasanuddin in August 19 to October 26. And we did all uh, craniotomy before uh, giving injury to the rats and ethical clearance by university uh, board. Dropout is death before study concluded. We found one death of the rat uh, before 24 hours. Um, population of study is 15 rats uh, divided into treatment groups A, B, and C, which is poly A, folinic acid, and uh, without head injury, a B for uh, with head injury only, and C both folinic acid and head injury. We measure SMGB1 with using RT PCR because uh, we want to know the expression of uh, messenger RNA of SMGB1 before being made translated into protein. And TNF alpha homocysteine interleukin 10 by Sandwich ELISA. This is the study flow. Uh, we uh, give those folinic acid 60 milligrams per body surface intraperitoneally. And uh, the weight of the drop is 20 grams with 20 centimeters height. Uh, we can see the, uh, we, uh, before first sampling, we group the, the, the rats in three groups and uh, do the study flow like this picture. So uh, this picture left, um, upper left is the calcium folinate that I did use. And uh, we group the, the rats randomly into three groups and all the rats are being weighted for uh, the modified uh, body surface area and dosage of uh, anesthesia and uh, folic acid. And uh, all rats are craniotomized and as a sterilized procedure and given antibiotics uh, topically. Um, blood samples taken from the, uh, the blood vessel from the uh, tails. And the, the right side, Lower right is the our our weight drop model. It is not so sophisticated, but it uh, could uh, give uh, the results. Uh, you can see that the rod that being uh, dropped was uh, tied with uh, a thread. So when the first hit, and uh, if there is and there was a recoil, we can hold the thread. So there are no secondary percussion. Um, this is the result. So HMGB1 fold change. Um, I know that RT-PCR is now a trend causing like um, in COVID. 
but uh, we don't use the city or cycle threshold because we want to uh, measure the fold change. So fold change is uh, com uh, combined with housekeeping gene that we use is beta actin gene. So beta actin gene as the housekeeping gene can measure whether the uh, messenger RNA of HMGP1 will fold how many times compared uh, beta actin. So HMGP1, we can see group A, B, and C, homocysteine with uh, nanomol uh, per milliliter A, B, and C, and TNF alpha picogram per milliliter A, B, and C, and interleukin 10 picogram per milliliter A, B, and C. Uh, we called that, that uh, the, the target, target group is uh, group C, which is folinic acid and heat injury. So with this, we can uh, focus our attention to group C and zero, uh, 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 zero time, at uh, the time is zero, 12 hours and 24 hours. We can see that uh, on 24 hours, all marker uh, can be considered uh, lower than uh, before uh, on the tw uh, 12 hours. And if we compare with other group, the group C uh, shows response that uh, at 24 hour after injury, all the markers are reduced. But we, uh, if we see uh, group A, we give we gave folinic acid and do the craniotomy, but no head injury. We can see that uh, all markers are uh, increasing in value, but uh, there is no response from uh, folinic acid. So with this, I can con I can uh, find that. The, 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 the lecophorin is, has no effect if there is no head injury. Uh, this is the group C model. Um, from HNGB1 fold change, this is the mean uh, score, uh, the, the, the value, mean value of each of the marker. And the point, uh, the score that I uh, bold with color red is no, no significant. So there is no significant uh, value in interleukin 10 between zero hours and 24 hours, TNF alpha zero and 24 hours, in homocysteine 12 and 24 hours. So based on this uh, statistical analysis using ANOVA, uh, I can uh, conclude that uh, in HMGB1, there is significant in all the groups. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the value is uh, different between all the hours. In interleukin 10, there is no significant dif uh, difference, uh, difference in zero and 24, mean, which means that uh, interleukin 10 on uh, 24 hours has the same uh, statistical value with uh, before uh, or uh, the zero hours, which is also same with TNF alpha. But homocysteine on, uh, there is no difference in 12 hours and 24 hours, which is um, statistically the score is the same. So by this, uh, I have to uh, adhere, I, I, may, I have to discuss about the limitations. So the study is only 24 hour period and also bound by ethics in animal study uh, for the university sampling is maximum, maximum five per groups. And I only did uh, three groups. 
which is four groups is better because we have we will have a negative control and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, do do more powerful uh, statistics. As a conclusion, uh, folinic acid has an effect, which is a mechanism yet to be explained in neuroinflammation. There were decreased HMGB1 expression, serum concentration of interleukin 10, TNF alpha, and homocysteine 24 hours after injury in head injury uh, model and folinic group. This finding indirectly put forward that folinic acid might have a neuroprotective property. HMGB1 expression, serum TNF alpha, interleukin 10, and homocysteine is increased after head injury, regardless of folinic acid administration. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. A really interesting presentation, right? Issue. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's commendable that a neurosurgeon uh, also finds the time to to do basic science research like this. Yes, it was uh, very nice to do. And to know about and read about interleukins and cytokines. Yeah. So if uh, there are questions, uh, I, I, I can start with one question, Thomas. Yes. Uh, I, I didn't get well. Uh, did you uh, do administration of folinic acid uh, by uh, intravenous injection? Um, uh, we did. Uh, intraperitoneal injection. Intraperitoneal. Okay. Okay. Yes. And, uh, is the the metabolism of folinic acid known? I mean, uh, is it metabolized? How fast? Because I'm thinking uh, results can be very different if you uh, extend or shorten the, the the time interval between uh, administration and uh, what you are checking, right? So yes. I, I'm wondering if you if you considered in your study also these uh, metabolism factors. Um, yes, thank you for the questions. Um, I can uh, give answer like um, uh, it uh, the meta uh, metabolism differences in uh, IV and intraperitoneal or uh, intramuscular. Uh, 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 distribution of drugs in for folinic acid can be um, what is called uh, how to call uh, not mentioned in the in the study because uh, we do uh, we uh, the, the, the variables are controlled I can say like that so because all all the pop, uh, red pop population is given the same thing and uh, then uh, and also the the metabolism uh, uh, which is difficult if i do uh, we did intra intravenously because finding intravenous intra intra uh, vein in the rat is quite difficult and it will destroy the 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 what because we did only one day well, 24 hour study, it can uh, destruct the, uh, the tail, uh, the, the vein on the tail. So it's, right. it's uh, I mean, we can uh, take samples from it if it's uh, destroyed. Did you do administration before head trauma or immediately after head trauma? Before head trauma. Before head trauma. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. okay. Thank you. Question, Thomas. Um, like you use folinic acid and yes. in, in market uh, there are multiple drugs like uh, there are tetrahydrofolate is also available plain folic, folic acid is also available so how does folinic acid different from these vari variants tetrahydrofolate or dihydrofolate or folic acid yeah on, only the isoform so the isoform has to be changed in through tetrahydrofolate to enter the folic acid cycle, and also to change um, uh, methionine into homo uh, homocysteine, change into methionine 
uh, mm-hmm. the 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 uh, the substrate is about uh, methylene five uh, ten methylene tetrahydrofolate. So, um, I think it will be the same, but the difference is about the only the isoform. I so I think the the orientation of molecule, like they mentioned, left side right side, that is isoform. Am I correct? Because um, I don't recall uh, much molecular. Yeah. Uh, so the molecules, I mean, uh, like the coforin is formal tetrahydrofolic. So uh, folic acid can uh, be changed into uh, uh, folic acid is is if the methyl mm, folic acid is a methyl donor. So if the metal has given uh, given out, then uh, tetrahydrofolate is the main uh, what the, the the principle of the folic acid cycle. Okay. So the uh, tetrahydrofolate is it superior to folinic acid or equivalent to folinic acid? Um, In- I cannot say, but the the mm-hmm. what is called the main uh, cycle. <laughs> Sorry, wait. <laughs> the, the main, the main, the main, the main folinic acid cycle or the hub of the reactions are tetrahydrofolate. Okay, and uh, do you regularly use this tetrahydrofolate molecule in uh, your head injury patients after? No, uh, no, no. Yeah, we, we, if we don't have any guidelines or any treatment regarding hydrofolate therapy. Uh, the, the, uh, folinic acid therapy. That's why uh, I would like to. I mean, that, that is why I question the study. That uh, uh, I want to know whether if I use this, it will be beneficial to the head injury patients. Which is, I know that uh, supplementations of multivitamins and high protein intake it has a good uh, outcome in uh, every head injury patient. So my, there is one suggestion, like uh, now that you have already did study in rat models, maybe you can uh, further uh, go for another study of use of tetrahydrofolate in head injury patients and uh, to s- look for the cognitive and uh, all those uh, improvement. Yes, in- that, that is the long term, but uh, I have difficulty in, I mean, in, in, in each experiment, we have to control the variables. Mm-hmm. But uh, in head injury, how can we control the mm, the force or uh, the, uh, the, the 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 degree of injury in humans? That is the difficult to control. It. But uh, well, it can it could be done. Hmm. So, any more questions? So do, do you do you know Thomas if there are other studies published studies about uh, positive effect neuroprotective effect of um, from uh, folic acid fortification uh, I did found some some study that uh, they give uh, rats uh, a, fu- a full amount of folic acid dose uh, for one or two months I think. And then they do the, the weight drop test, uh, which is uh, the fortified with folic acid has a better outcome. Mm-hmm. But they, it is it they they were using oral uh, folic acid. So uh, I would like to test whether uh, IV or intramuscular injections can cause uh, different. Yeah. 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 So Thomas, thanks so much. So it's uh, you, quite, quite, yeah, quite interesting. Maybe the in the, uh, uh, Indonesia, the you have a uh, lots of trauma cases. I think. So yes, the, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> the is it, it uh, is it a protect of the blood brain barrier and also or the is it effective of the diffuse brain injury? Mm, uh, yes, and t- thank you, Pro. Uh, the the questions, um, blood-brain barrier for folinic acid is uh, I uh, haven't 
known the the the, the literature, but uh, uh, I think it will. Um, my hypothesis is that folinic acid will cause some change in uh, the homocysteine level, and uh, from that we want to know whether homocysteine level will uh, will uh, influence the outcome of head injury by measuring the HMGB1. Um, but with this result, I don't find the uh, difference. I mean, don't find the connection between uh, homocysteine and also uh, intracranial concentration. Uh, so that is the mean limitation of the study. Maybe I think Professor Nakayama will uh, have one question to you, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> I cannot understand. I'm not familiar to basic research, but uh, I, I studied a lot from Dr. Tommy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Anyway, I think uh, the trauma uh, concern, we need some breakthrough for the treatment. So the, we, we need such a ba very basic uh, the research work. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Thomas. And uh, are there other questions? So if uh, there are no other questions uh, issue, uh, I think uh, we, we should thank uh, both our speakers, Professor Naoki Nakayama and Dr. Thomas Tommy for very interesting topics uh, they talked about today. Um, thank you. Yeah, issue, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, it was uh, the one end was taking us to the practical neurosurgery, which we are regularly doing uh, by Professor Nauki, and uh, they taught us about he taught us about uh, advanced technology, and the another one was basic research, the basic which we are forgetting, and so it was a combination of both. So it, it was a very nice webinar, I personally feel. Yeah, I agree. Uh, matching both uh, clinical, surgical and basic science uh, research, uh, I think uh, it's, it's crucial, especially nowadays. Uh, we need to uh, go ahead with both if we want uh, to give the best to our patients. So uh, yeah. this is a very good message, I think, especially yes. for young neurosurgeons. So thank you very much to uh, Thomas Tommy and Naoki Nakayama. Thank you, Professor Yoko Kato. Uh, she's always uh, supporting uh, young neurosurgeons and our association. Thank you, Raja and Dr. Liu uh, for the wonderful organization and support. Uh, I, I thank every one of you for joining uh, this uh, meeting and we will soon organize uh, new meetings uh, uh, in, the, in the months ahead. Yeah. So I, I think we can close uh, the session here. <laughs>